Capitalism and Disability by Marta Russell. This is chapter four, a brief history of Walmart and disability discrimination. Walmart was recently busted for disability discrimination in hiring, again. In January of 2004, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, filed a lawsuit against the retail giant for discriminating against C Stephen J. Bradley when he applied for a job at Walmart in Richmond, Missouri. Bradley has cerebral palsy and uses crutches or a wheelchair as mobility aids. Walmart refused to reach a settlement, so the EEOC filed suit using the ADA seeking lost wages and benefits, compensatory and punitive damages, and a job for Bradley. It was just back in 2001 that Walmart and the EEOC reached a $6.8 million consent decree, which resolved 13 lawsuits the commission had pending against the corporation in 11 states, including Missouri. Ten years after passage of the ADA, Walmart's illegal pre-employment questionnaire, Matrix of Essential Job Functions, violated employment discrimination provisions, ADA, by seeking disability-related information from applicants before making conditional offers of employment. Title I of the ADA prohibits private employers, state and local governments, employment agencies, and labor unions from discriminating from dis from oh no from discriminating against qualified individuals with disabilities in job application procedures hiring discharge advancement compensation job training and other terms and conditions of employment unfortunately that tag qualified applies to disability discrimination cases it rightly does not to gender or age-related civil rights law. As part of the settlement, Walmart agreed it would change its ADA policies and procedures, create an ADA coordinate position, provide training in ADA compliance, and offer jobs to certain disabled applicants. It wasn't long before a judge slapped Walmart with major sanctions for violating the consent decree in May of 2001 in the U.S. District Court for the District of Arizona. The court sanctioned the corporation $720,200 and ordered it to produce a TV advertisement stating that Walmart, Walmart had violated the ADA and referring people who believe they have been discriminated against. The court also ordered Walmart to reinstate William Darnell, a hearing impaired employee, to a full-time receiver unloader position and directed the corporation to accommodate Darnell's disability in all activities of his job. Walmart was found in violation of the decree because of its failure to create alternative training materials for use nationwide by hearing impaired employees. The materials include a sign language version of its computer-based learning modules used to train entry-level employees. In addition, EEOC contends and Walmart admitted that it had failed to provide court-ordered training on the ADA to its management employees. It is extremely unusual for EEOC to have to ask a court to hold an employer in contempt, said C. Emanuel Smith, acting regional attorney for EEOC's Phoenix District Office, which has jurisdiction for Arizona. Then in June 2001, the EEOC filed its 16th ADA suit against Walmart for violating the ADA again. The EEOC accused the world's largest retailer of failing to reasonably accommodate an employee with a disability at its Peoria, Arizona store. The lawsuit alleged that Walmart discriminated against Alice Rayberg by refusing to provide a reasonable accommodation for her disability. Rayberg is severely limited in her ability to stand for extended periods of time. Walmart refused Rayberg's request for permission to occasionally sit down while performing her duties as a people greeter, failed to engage in the interactive process required by the ADA, and constructively discharged Rayberg from her position. The suit sought compensatory and punitive damages, reinstatement, injunctive relief, and a court order requiring Walmart to conduct training that will prevent further violations of the ADA. 
EEOC also has won several jury verdicts against Walmart and other disability discrimination suits. In one case, a jury found that Walmart intentionally refused to hire an applicant as a cashier because he used a wheelchair and awarded him more than $3.5 million in damages, which was subsequently reduced by the court to comply with the ADA's statutory caps. Again, caps do not apply to other protected minorities. In another case, a jury awarded $157,500 to an applicant due to Walmart's unlawful, unlawful pre-employment inquiry and refusal to hire him because of his disability an amputated arm. The verdict, in, the verdict included a $100,000 punitive damage award, the largest ever levied against a company for asking an unlawful medical question under the ADA. To wit, private sector government resolutions must be watchdogged to assure compliance. Why, under such a hostile environment, would anyone want to work at Walmart anyway? Aside from disability discrimination, Walmart is dragging wages and benefit levels back to 19th, 19th century standards. Walmart workers are paid $2 to $3 an hour less than union members who perform similar jobs. $6 per hour is about the average wage for unskilled workers these days. Contrast that to five relatives of the late Sam Walton, founder of Walmart Stores Incorporated, who retained five of the top 10 spots of the wealthiest people in the world. Their net worth increased to $18.8 .8 billion each from $17.5 billion in 2001, thanks to consumers buying the cheaper food, cheaper shirts, cheaper sheets, jeans, and motor oil, in short, cheaper everything, and the corporation's dubious labor practices. The company has been found to ask employees to work longer than the standard 40-hour work week without overtime pay. It has often harassed or fired non-disabled workers who have not been viewed as sufficiently cooperative with management. Workers who did not believe that Walmart had been adequately accommodating of their needs could fear losing their jobs if they discussed this fact with a reporter. William Darnell lost his job at Walmart for demanding deaf-related accommodations from management. Walmart, America's largest retailer, employs 1.14 million workers at nearly 4,000 facilities worldwide. Only about one in three adults with significant disabilities is working. Many live on below poverty disability benefits. In a shrinking job market under the Bush administration, the job hunt has gotten fierce. In the view of some significantly disabled persons, and indeed non-disabled workers, any job is a job worth having these days. That is the way of it.